Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on mastering motion. Even if motion graphics scare you, we can get a lot of productive work out of motion, and that's what this whole webinar is about. Let me introduce you to motion. Motion makes things move. Motion creates motion graphics. And you use motion when you want something to move, whether you're moving text or images or backgrounds. Because motion is an effects package, not an editing package, you want to do your editing inside Final Cut Pro, and you want to keep your motion projects short. By default, a motion project runs 10 seconds. You don't do complex editing in motion. You create short scenes, short shots, and bring those shots into Final Cut for editing. There's no question that motion is the future live type is going away. It's not even shipped with Final Cut 7, though it is supported. I don't expect it to be shipped or supported in the next version of Final Cut whenever that is finally released. Apple has made clear that motion is the future of motion graphics as part of Final Cut Studio. The reason is, is that motion does more than live type. It does it faster, it does it better, and it does it way differently. And it's this difference that's both the strength and the weakness of motion. Now let me set expectations as far as this session is concerned. We only have an hour together, and motion is as complex and as deep as Final Cut Pro. There's, there's no way that we can learn everything about this application in just one hour, and <laughs> absolutely no way that I can turn you into a graphics designer in an hour. So my goal for this session is to show you how to use motion, remove the fear of something new, and give you concrete examples that you can use to discover more about how motion works on your own. So the goals for today are to show you how to send files between Final Cut Pro and Motion, introduce you to the Motion interface, create something really, really simple. <laughs> My kids would say something really, really stupid, but it'll get the point across in terms of introducing us to the interface. I'll show you how to set project properties, show you how to use and change motion templates show you how to create a lower third title, show you how to use the motion library, and show you how to create a full screen infographic. Along the way, I'll also show you how to add and modify text, how to animate text, how to add background elements, how to adjust and time graphic elements, how to use behaviors to animate objects, how to use filters to change how something looks, how to use blend modes and add video to a graphic, and, and how to add background visual elements. Before we actually switch over to the application, I want to stress what I think is the number one interface rule. It's true inside Final Cut, and it's also true inside Motion. Creating effects in Motion is done interactively, in real time. If you've got After Effects experience, you know that to get anything to do anything, you have to create keyframes to animate. With Motion, you only set keyframes when you're forced. Most of the time, you'll never set keyframes. Instead, you'll use behaviors. When in doubt, press the spacebar to play your motion sequence and tweak it. Watch it in real time. You won't have to spend time rendering. Motion takes advantage of the power of your computer and your graphics card, and it does all of its magic in real time. For instance, let's start with an example, how we send files from Final Cut to Motion. The benefit to sending files between Final Cut and Motion is that the project setup is automatic. You don't have to worry about project properties or easy setup or all the different technical specifications of your video. Final Cut and Motion negotiate that between themselves and you're not even involved. The first time you move a file from Final Cut Pro to Motion, you send it. That's a key point. The first time you move a file from Final Cut to Motion, you send it. Every time thereafter that you need to change it, you use Open an Editor. So the first time, you send. The second time, you open an editor. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to select a file inside Final Cut. I'm going to send it over to Motion, and I'm going to apply a desaturation filter. And the reason is it's easy to see. <laughs> and then we're going to save the file. We'll switch back to Final Cut. Then we'll return the file to Motion, undo the filter, then we'll save the file and switch back to Final Cut. So we're going to select the file in Final Cut, send it to Motion, apply a filter, save it, that brings it back to Final Cut. Then we're going to send it back to Motion a second time, take the filter out, save the file, and switch back to Final Cut. There's no rendering, there's no file importing, there's no configuring, everything just works. Let me show you. 